and he had some real dank weed. And I took a hit of the weed and dropped him off. I said, all right, man, later. And she was in the back seat, he was in the front seat. And so I drive around, pull up, and I said, all right, man, later. I did that four, probably four times, four or five times. Just kept, and she goes, we already dropped them off. So I'm like, oh, you know, it was, it was pretty, it was the best. That was, yeah. Anyway, so we go to Walmart and we were in there and um, we're in, we're in there. No, wait a second, with the beach first, then with the Walmart. So we went to the beach again, not the same one, but, uh, and I was pulling out from the beach and I got stuck like in the enter and exit thing there and it got stuck. And I just get up and I was like, here, and I showed her what to do with the stick. I said, put it in, you know, here's reverse. She goes, I don't want to drive. I said, here, just you know, pop the clutch and hit the gas. And I got in the front and I picked the car up, literally picked it up and walked it back two or three feet, dropped it when she's spinning. I picked it up though. And I get back in the car and she goes, you picked the car up. I said, yeah, like nothing. And uh, so we went to the, we went to the uh, Walmart. We went, we got the one little camera, it's like a, a little Polaroid camera, it's like stickers. And um, next morning we had stickers everywhere in the house or in the room, but some things happened, messed up. So she had to leave. She had to go back up north because that was, at that time it was only legal in that state. So she left and she, we wrote, wrote each other and, but it just faded out, you know, but it was, she was really, she was a bright light. That was, I've only met, I think three white lights in my life. You know, when you like uh, your auras, and I and I never I didn't see them. Only mine I could see, but um, cause I never saw. That's another thing, auras. But um, yeah, uh, the aura thing. When I was probably from thirteen to si till so I was sixteen, so it was only a few years. I could see people's auras. I could. It wasn't like you see it. It was sensed it it was it was like but it was a visual weird it was weird it was in your brain though i didn't see it around them it's in your brain but it's placed over it's weird and i never told nobody about it. i never tell anybody about it and um but i saw green blue and red and i don't know what any of them meant i thought red meant confusion didn't really know what green and blue maybe that was like i don't know but i didn't understand what it meant though green and blue were it never it didn't matter because even reds were good but just something was but I couldn't feel, you know, I couldn't tell what it was, what it was. And um, I lost that ability when I, when I got depressed, you know, when I was, had a breakup and emotions and everything got in the way. And I lost that ability completely. And I wondered why I never got it back, but I know why I got, didn't get it back because um, as I got healthier through life and older, my imp, I started to see in through my eyes and then I could actually read, I could read good, bad, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't read, orders is like, it's all over the place. I couldn't, I can't, do it, but eyes I can read. And um, if you give me five minutes, especially right now, um, the way I the way I see now with my with, you give me five minutes. See, most men I could see them. I understand, them, right? I mean, I just take a look and I know exactly what's going on. Some some are different, you know, depending. But women are harder, and it usually takes. But a five minute conversation, I'll know you. I, I, it, almost everybody in the world I haven't met. I haven't met anyone I haven't been able to read in five minutes. Just give me a five minute conversation, you know, without them trying to hide, you know, guys, I, I can see lies. When someone's lying, someone's there, something's odd, I can see it. When someone's not being true, I see it. I'm the best lie detector, I think, I believe that. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it's, it sucks too though, man, because I can't have any friends, because everybody sucks, <laughs> you know? It's like all, they're out with your motives. But um, when I see it, it sucks. Um. But yeah, um, that was that was pure. I'm mean, Molly. The stuff you guys call Molly, that stuff ain't. That stuff's garbage. Not nothing like this. This is a, this was twelve hours of just the the most. And and woke up the next morning feeling like a million bucks, you know. And um, it's not Molly. That's every call is Molly. I'm Molly. No, I've only had I've had a ton of that stuff, you know. And I've never had any. That's one time. And it was coming from a. Lab, I think it came from the lab, but um, you know, and like acid, you checked out. I didn't really care for acid too much. It was all right, but it was a more out. You know, I liked the I like shrooms. I did that started when I was probably seventeen. Shrooms and weed were the first really weed I, and drugs I ever did. Acid was first. Uh, weed, acid, and then shrooms. You know, and then cocaine. That's how it happened. But um, but shrooms, I loved it. But 
and I remember the last time I did it before I kind of did it within a couple few years, but um, I, I stopped and we had, we used to go out in the field and there was a field that had, it was by turnpike and stuff. It had, it was a, it was a fish farm, an abandoned fish farm. So it had like all these hundreds of little lakes, you know, little ponds surrounded by little, you know, like uh, tr little trees and stuff, but it was connected to a cow farm. Like they knocked down the, the, the cattle ranch, or whatever, uh, cows and cattle thing. And damn it. So these cows were all through there, you know, and it didn't matter what time, you, like, as long as it was warm enough and everything, it, everything grew all, you can walk that field two or three times in a day and repick everything. You know, we pick everything, we bags, big old bags of stuff. And I remember we made, it was four of us and we made, we took like one of them big old turkey fry things with the propane and boiled the whole garbage bag with the, uh, well, it's just grape juice. The Hunt's great grape juice because it helped your stomach. And we filled up one of those coolers, the five gallon coolers, got in my car and started out in, we started out in the woods in the daytime and then we go to the beach at night. So, and it was a gauntlet, man, like a 10 mile drive out to the beach. And I remember stopping, we were at the red light and it was two in the morning. We're right next to Sewell's Point Police Office and they're horrible, man, they're, they're bad. They'll rat, I mean, they're just not good police, man. They're really not. And, uh, stuh. but I was still, we were waiting in the light and I'm arguing with someone in the back. I don't know what we're talking about. And the guy in front seat, man, this thing's went like three or four times. I'm like, oh shit, you know? So we go back out there and we hang out until the morning and I'm out there on the beach. It was different, man. It was, the beaches were like woods and opening up every, no houses. And we go out back out in the, and we did that for two days. And I remember I was coming back and it's like, third day or morning or something, I'm coming over the bridge back in the city and I, my, I, everything went pink. Like every, the, everything, I was looking pink. Everything was pink, just pink. And I closed my eyes and I went like that and it came out of it and I was like, that's it. <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't do it for, I didn't do it again for years, 20 years. But, um, and the reason for that was, I knew that when I got really, when I got really messed up when I was 21, that one girl, the Kate, uh, not Mary, um, the Greek, the Greek girl, the stripper. But um, yeah, she, man, that, that messed me up. And I never I stopped doing um, psychedelics, because especially shrooms, because when I, they, people ask me, I said, man, I haven't packed for that trip. I don't pack for that trip anymore, you know? Because you're, when you're not in the right place, it's not fun, you know? It's just not fun. If you're not, if you're not a good place, don't do it. Or you, you really have to have your mind straight before you do psychedelics, especially um, psilocybin. And I'll tell you, I took, um, this dude, the Hungarian dude, his family's like Hungarian mob or whatever. He was too, cool dude. He um he used to have books of acid, you know, big you know, hundred sheets of it. And I think we're having a party. I'm not sure if it was I think I think we're having a, a Mike Tyson fight. And, you know, pay view and we had about twenty or thirty people over in my house. I think my parents were in some other country. But um anyway, so we were uh partying, man, and he was just giving I, ten strips out, man. Just passing all over the party. You could take a lot of acid, man. I, believe me, I did. But um, so he's like, getting a 10 strip. And he's like, and he, and he sold like, the, he got rid of it. He didn't even sell it, really. He sold it. It was a party, so he just gave the shit away. He had like a sheet and a half or something. He gave it all away at the party. And he says, Scotty, you want to see God? And he had the bag and he opened it. And I remember licking the inside of the bag, bottom of the bag. And I remember my neck froze up and was up looking up in the air. And the whole f ceiling fell down on it down on me and I remember you know, coming back out of it and I walked in my room and I had a bottle of golden slog and I put big old mug like cup filled it up took it and all of a sudden ugh, and a drill and then the ashes took over and you know I'm all right and I was like here Sammy take it try this he, so he licked it did the same thing locked up his head neck locked up and then I took the shot and then we had I had a little 150 elite scooter and two in the morning man we left my girlfriend and everybody we left Came back almost in the morning, man. Two my girls were crazy. They were upset. But that was the only night I saw, saw, really saw something there. I was in the woods. We turn off the light and it's like the shadows. We were like crawling. <laughs> you know, it's, it's open, but we think it's, it was the shadows. It was crazy. I come around the corner and there's like rainbows, man. It was like, like the Star Trek, like launch or something. It was crazy. That was the most intense I've ever had, man. And it was pretty much towards the end of it. You know, I, I had to just get away from it. Once I wasn't right, you know, and, but I think psilocybin mushrooms, 
saved me. I really do. I think it, it, because I only did it with a couple friends and we did it all with good people. I never had a bad trip. And anybody that ever had bad um, stuff on a psilocybin, it's their, they can't deal with their, their minds aren't right for it. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, they can get there, but it's not. Because, you know, we have so much stigma against everything. Like, so when they're, before they're even doing it, they've already have like an, an anxiety over it. So that's why when people smoke pot, I'm allergic. No, your anxiety is because you've been bred, oh, this is bad, 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 bad. You know, which I don't, um, people, I don't, and I don't think you should smoke weed until you're an adult, like 21, really, because you don't grow emotions. It's not good for you. You know, if you want to do it when you're 21, you're an adult and you need it, fine. You know, I understand that. But when you're young, don't do it. Don't do it. Um, the only one I recommend is uh, shrooms. I do recommend them. When you're, even when you're younger, 15, 16, that's when you need them. You know, I witnessed a lot of stuff, a lot of transformations from people, even lately. Uh, um, yeah, it, you, they took it and it was like their body was just, ugh, it was just, they, they're fighting it, you know? And you have, to, you have to tell them, hey, you know, you, you're in control. It's you, you know, they have to let that go. It's like, they don't, it's like your body, men, we men, when they take it, they like fight it. You, they don't want that emotion to come out. Women, they take it and they start either, they start moving. For some reason, women move and men lock up, <laughs> you know? And uh, it's the way we are, We it really is. And I remember at the beginning of the night, he's, he's you know, just not doing, and I, not, I um, made the right music, I made him, I made him under you know like relax i got him to relax and uh by the end of the night he's like i want to have sex even though yeah, i've never had sex but um he within within the week or two he was a different person and, and it really was and he even said it you know and we noticed it it was um it was night and day huh man because he released that tension and um it really does I, it says a 100 guarantee it has medicinal purposes, 180%, but it has to be done right with the right people and everything. I know what I'm doing. I've been babying, babysitting people my whole life. And, uh, you know, alcohol is poison. Um, I don't drink liquor or nothing. I drink a beer once in a while, rarely, because I like to fizz. But, um, yeah, liquor, um, when I drank, it was like, I drank, a, I was a social drink, a weekend warrior and stuff, but I got, I was drinking 100 proof, smearing off. And 100 proof is different than 80, man, different. I was a different human being on that. And I drank it straight, you know, uh, you know, just ice and vodka. That was it. And but I could hold my stuff. What's, you know, I, I wasn't like one of them stupid idiots. I was like, I, I, I could, I could be the, the extrovert, the extreme extrovert, or I could be an extreme introvert. I just check out. It just depends on the situation. You know, when it, when it comes to that, that personality scale, I'm at the peaks of every one of them, you know, at the bottom of the one and everything else, you know. But that's how I am now. You know, I was, I was all over the place, kind of peaked on this side, but all the other ones are kind of all over the place. But um, I've always been an extrovert and introvert, both of them. And, um, but it just depends on the situation. And, uh, yeah, because I can, and then, you know, talking about alpha people and all this stuff, you know, I, I wanted, I just protected the people around me. You know, it seemed like all, I could always, I always knew some, I don't know. And now I know more, it makes, my life makes much more sense now, you know, but a lot of confusion when I was younger, especially not talking. And I had no internet looking things up and didn't know nothing. I mean, I know nothing really about the Buddha until I, until just recently, you know, I stayed away from everything because I was just my own self. But, um. Yeah, I think it helps. I know it helps. I don't know what I'm thinking. I know, but it has to be done right. Now, and you take it, you take a dose, lasts about four hours, all right? So that's what you plan for. Acid, you might get 10, 12 hours of that. That's why I don't like that. It's like, duh. But um, yeah, and it's not, it's more outside. I'm more of that. I can have either one, depending on, those, I guess, the people I'm with. But um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, pills are horrible. Oxy, that was horrible. Xanax, horrible. I, um, and I didn't mean to do this, but someone prescribed me Xanax for the re when I was younger for not the right reasons or whatever. And he gave me, I got 120 Xanax and I went out. I had no remembrance of anything really. I just kept eating the Xanax and I gave probably 20 to my friend. 
they were little, little 0.5s. I ate about, about 100 Xanax that night, um, 14 Ambien, because I was on Ambien, sleep, and a um, little bit of cocaine and alcohol. I don't remember taking it all. I don't remember taking any of it, but alcohol and eating the pills, whatever. Not all that, though. I remember taking a few, but you just, it was like nothing. I don't remember nothing. And then seven days later, I woke up in the hospital and uh, I said, I'm a gecko, not to be confused with Geico. So stop calling me because of commercials, I guess. And my girlfriend's sitting there and I'm like, well, you know? And I was actually, I remember waking up and I was actually kind of upset. I was alive. It was weird. I, was, I didn't feel uh, whatever. I was kind of, I pulled my own things out too. I was a dick. Uh, I, we ended up having sex in the, <laughs> within, within 30 minutes, I was having sex with her. Nurses on there knocking, yeah, you know. <laughs> I had to drink a bunch of Gatorade before I could leave. Electrolytes was gone. Yeah, they don't like you in the bathroom. That's sick. I was crazy, dude. And I didn't think nothing of it. I just kept going on, man. I was an extremist. But I didn't, part, didn't do it every day because you, you have to work. and You know what I mean? I had to maintain still. I wasn't all over the place. Um, but, uh, yeah, but when I did it, I did it. Um, alcohol, you know, and, you know, hanging out with the wrong friend, you know, hanging out, having weak people around you can mess you up. You know, like when I do cocaine, I can, I function like, and I remember like I could do cocaine and I have, I don't know, problem having sex and it goes, why, you know, and I'm like, because when it's time for that, that's all that's in there. I, that stuff goes away. I focus on that and what people do most men, they can't focus on that. They're focused on this because it does work. It's you. Your brain's making it do that. Not the thing. It's your brain. <laughs> yeah, believe me. I make it work. I like it. <laughs> I like the <to> work. <laughs> Whatever. But anyway, yeah. So um, you, uh, it's, um, I don't recommend any of that stuff. The only one I would even think about doing is the, um, is shrooms. You know, weed, if you're older, I guess it's not too bad, but. Try not to because um, you really don't get the whole point, the whole thing of life. When you start taking things, it just doesn't help. You know, try to take, stay off as less medication as you can. That's the best. I, you know, I might take a couple migraine pills or something. If I have a toothache, I'm going to take a painkiller. I can still take things, you know. I don't use things like that. Um, if I need something, I take it. But it's prescribed. And I'm not, you know what I'm saying? And you got to be honest and that's it. Honest with yourself and with the people around you. But, um... You know, I barely survived. I really did. I've had a lot of close things, guns, knives, I mean, some situations. Another thing about, you know, I was like 18, the first time I had a gun pulled on me. I snatched it out of his hand, you know? I didn't even thought. I grabbed it. Because that's the thing, too. You, you run towards a gun, and you run from a knife. Run away from a knife. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. I've, I've twice, and then I got caught. Well, it was on, you better got because of my nuts. I didn't take that one away. He, he got my stuff. But um, yeah, man, the drug, it's violent. And I think you're never going to stop it. Um, you know, you're never going to get people, people are going to take drugs, especially like a heroin type thing. And I think if it, if it was monitored and brought out, then people could probably live their lives. Because I could, I could do it and live, you know, because I didn't chase it all day. Maybe I spent, tw you know, out of everything at 20 bucks, maybe, you know, that wasn't much. I'm not, I'm not going for it. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying do drugs at all. It's bad. It's bad. You know, living, living a clean life is, it's just, it's full, you know, it's, you're not missing anything. And when you, when you take drugs to, to dampen it, it's just, you're going to pay sometime, sometime you're going, you're going to pay, you know, you're going to pay. It's just when it's a violent, violent thing. Um, yeah, but I don't want to get too much into everything about that. Too much details and other things. I wish I knew the truth about things when I was younger. Someone was honest with me. When I asked them the questions. There were some good people out there. And, you know, when I talk about those lights, I've only seen, met, now looking back, I couldn't see, I didn't, I, you know, I, I stopped seeing when I was like 16, but I started um, reading later on, you know, so I could use my eyes later. And um, it was, um, uh, but now looking back, there was Trisha from New York, 
she was a very, very um, she didn't do any drugs or anything like that. She was a, a vegetarian, and I didn't know she was a vegetarian until we went out to dinner, you know? That was it. She didn't identify as it. And I dated a couple of them, and they do, there's a different flavor, <laughs> and uh, that's definitely, and, um, but yeah, you didn't, um, you didn't know it. They didn't tell you. I'm not like, veganism's a religion. You know, they just want something to attach to, identify with. You know, they're just extreme. These people just did it because they, they, that's how they, yeah. When she, she just came from New York and she wanted to go out in the woods. So I took her out on Martin Gray. We're driving and uh, she sees a cow and it's middle of night, but it's, you know, we got the moon out. She stops the car at like 12 at night in the middle of the country road and goes over there trying to pet a cow. I said, come on, she's never seen one. I said, come on, you know, and then we're driving a little farther and uh, there was a gator about five foot and his head, just his head kind of got hit and I noticed that when I got out, he's still kind of alive. So I went to grab him, put him in the trunk, and she took off. She wouldn't let me, you know. It was like fresh, man. <laughs> she didn't want it. I, there was other stuff with that, but yeah, she was a cool chick. It was a cool, cool chick. But I wasn't right at the time, you know. And uh, and then there's Anna from Oteana, New York, and um, and then this guy named Jungle Jim. He was a 50 year old dude, and uh, I don't know where he's from, the Middle East, something like that. But he spoke like seven languages, man. And I'll tell you, I usually, I'm always usually the top dog up there. This guy, I just sat and listened to him, man. He was something else, man. He was a, he was a real, he dude, that his light was white, man. That was bright. Good guy. He lived on a like a little houseboat thing. And uh, man, he was he was a good dude. He's the one who, he's the one who could see. He told me, like, I brought a friend around him, and he, and he said, that's good, that guy's no good. Within a month, he actually robbed that guy, robbed me. And he was a friend from elementary you see what i'm saying boys got all that shit and i didn't see it because i had all this other stuff you know i was not emotionally right so i couldn't see like i do now and i'll tell you when when i became when i went through that enlightenment man that was extreme dude it was, it was too much it was and it still is that's why I, I mean give me five minutes with about anybody and i'll tell you exactly what their motives are who they are what type of person they are i know them pretty much most part i know exactly where they're coming from Men, I can see within their eyes. Just look at them one second. Most, most men. Some men not, you know? Because I look in their eyes. Men look in their eyes, will nod, you know? Like real, yeah. All right, you know? People won't do that no more. But, um, yeah, I probably got more, but those are it. But, yeah, I spent a long time with it. Um, yeah. And I, the last time I did, well, I'll tell you this. This is, five, like, I don't know, five years ago or so, six years ago, I was hanging out with a girl and, and um, she said, this is when I, for, I, she said she has some heroin. And I'm like, wow, I love heroin. I haven't done it in 20 years or something. And she did, I did it. Well, it wasn't heroin. It was fentanyl. And I went out. I did only a little bit. And I went out, woke up in the back of an ambulance, one flip-flop. And it was like, and what happened? He's like, yeah, I hit you with two Narcans, you know? And I was like, oh, my God, I could have died. And my kids, this is where, this is what would have ended? This is where I would end it? And I was like, no, no more. And that's it. I never did any hard drugs from there. And that was it. Done. That was it. You know what I mean? I did things to the extreme. And when things happen like that, you're just done. That's it. Cut it off, man. You know? So, well, I hope you all have a good night. But, yeah, the world's not perfect, man. No one is. So, y'all have a good day. Later.